Have you ever been running ProPresenter on Sunday morning and found yourself constantly thinking, I wonder what's showing up on the back screen right now? Or did those lower thirds actually show up properly? Or maybe you've been in that frustrating situation where you click on a slide and you think it went to the right output, but you're not really sure because you can only see one preview at a time. So you're switching between different preview windows, trying to keep track of four different outputs. And honestly, it's stressful. You shouldn't have to guess what your audience is seeing. Thankfully, in ProPresenter, there's a way for you to see your main screen, your lower third output, your back screen, and your camera input all at the same time in one preview window. No more switching around, no more guessing, no more wondering. Well, hey, everybody, I'm Joshua, the founder of worshipresources.church, and this is video four in our five-part series, Five Hacks Every ProPresenter Volunteer Needs to Know. Today, we're solving the problem of not being able to see all of your outputs at once. So I'm going to show you how to set up a multi-view display right inside of ProPresenter that allows you to see every output in ProPresenter. Be sure to stay to the end, and that's where I'll show you a few tips on how to make sure that your multi-view stays exactly the way you configured it, even when other volunteers are scheduled to serve. So let's dive right in, and I'll show you how to set up multi-view in ProPresenter. This is a typical setup with your main screen output, your lower third output, and then your back screen or your stage display. But I want to see all three of these screens. And I also want to see our video input. I'm going to press Control V. And I want to see our camera input as well, all on this preview monitor. So this is how it's done. I'm going to press Control V to get rid of the media bin. I'm going to go up to screens and then click configure screens. From there, I'm going to add a new stage screen. So I'm going to click the plus button. And I'm going to do a placeholder, new placeholder, and I'm going to do custom size. Now, this is helpful depending on how you want your screens to be. If you want to have four screens in a quadrant, or if you want to have them all stacked on top of one another, um, you can format it however you want to, but this custom size will be beneficial. I'm going to go ahead and stack mine on top of one another, so I'm going to have to do some math. First off, we're going to call this multi-view. I know the width is going to be 1920, and then my height is going to be determined how many outputs I want to display at the same time. So a typical display is 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to take 1080 times 4, and that's 4,320. I'm going to click OK. And you can see this will be the size of my multi-view window. I'm going to go ahead and label this multi-view here so it's clear. Now I'm going to close out of that. And I'm going to go to the More tab and click Stage Editor. And this is where I need to create a stage display with all of my outputs. So I'm going to click the plus button, click blank. And from here, I want the size of this to be the same size as my multi-view. So you can see right now my size is 1920 by 1080. But I'm going to choose my new multi-view screen, 1920 by 4320. I'm going to go ahead and change this background color. Instead of making it black, I'm going to make it this light gray. And from here, I'm going to add in some windows. There are multiple ways to add these preview windows. You can do the current slide text or the current slide image or the current slide notes. You can do the next slide text image notes. But what we want is the preview. We're going to preview the main screens, the lower thirds, and the back screen. You also can do this with a shape. If you were to add a shape, and then you can adjust the size of the shape to whatever you want it to be. And instead of filling it with color, you can fill it with the screen preview of main screens, and it will fill that way. But I'm just going to use this because it's simple. I'm going to click the drop down and click main screens. So now I'm going to go ahead and make this my the correct position so i want this to be a 1920 by 1080 
And now I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag this window in to make this a little bit smaller so that it fits easily inside this box. Remember, we're going to do four different outputs on this multi view. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this all the way up to the top. Hey, before we move on with this training, I want to mention that there's a free download in the description below. 12 best places you can find free media to use in your church this weekend inside of ProPresenter. I've looked all over the web to find the best places to find media, and these are the top 12 places that you can get free content. So go to the description below, click on that link, download the resource, and start downloading this free media from these 12 top places that I've found. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, make that 15% so I can see the entire window. So now I'm going to hold down Option and drag and copy this slide, making sure that it's evenly spaced. So it looks like I need to adjust a little bit. And now they're all evenly spaced. So now I can grab all, all of them by holding down Command and position them center into the window. So I have my main screen here. Now I want to have my lower third. So instead of filling with the main screen, I'm going to fill with lower thirds. Here I'm going to make this the back screen. So I'm going to fill with the back screen. And this one I'm going to fill with my camera input. So I'm going to go to video input and I'm going to choose camera one. I only have one camera. Camera one is what I want it to show up as. So now we're, we're well on our way, but I'm going to format this a little bit more to make it uh, really stand out. I'm going to go ahead and add a stroke to this box. So I'm going to make that five and uh, let's make this blue. It can be whatever color you want it to be. I'm going to do the same for here. Make that five and I'll make this one yellow. Make that five and we'll go green for the back screen. And then one more and we'll add the stroke five width and we'll make that red for the camera input. So now let's go ahead and uh, really up our game by adding some text to indicate which screen is what. So I'm going to click on the text box. So we'll call this main screens. I'm going to drag this and go ahead and increase the font size of this. Uh, that looks good. And let's go ahead and make it all caps. And I actually want to choose Helvetica uh, bold. So now we could put this anywhere, but I'm actually going to put this over here on the side. So first I'm going to copy these and move these over so I have some more space. So I'll click main screens and I'll rotate this text block. So go to shape and it will rotate this 90 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this so it fits in the bounding box and then put it right there. So I'm going to hold down option key, drag, and I'm going to add three more. And of course, we will rename these. So I'll click on this one and rename this uh, camera. This one is back screen. And this one is lower thirds. Okay, so now we have our multi-view set up. So now let's see how we can view it. So I go back to show, and instead of me clicking on the main screen, I'm going to change this to multi-view. And you can see that it doesn't quite look right. Right now I'm just seeing the back screen. And that's because I haven't applied the stage screen to the multi-view output. So if I click on screens, and go to multi-view, currently the stage 
screen is set to current and next. So just so I'm clear, if I go back to the stage editor, we only have two layouts. We have the current and next layout and this one that's called blank. So I'm going to rename this by up here in the right and call this multi-view so that it's really clear what it is. You can also right click and rename that way. I'm going to go back to the show, click on screens, and then I want multi-view, the multi-view output to be the multi-view stage display. And now when I change that, you can see I have my main screens, my lower thirds, my stage display, and my camera input. And here you can drag these windows to make this as big or as small as you want it to be. So now as I advance through the text, through the lyrics, I can see exactly what's showing up on lower thirds, exactly what's showing up on the stage display, and exactly what's showing up on the camera input. Obviously, you can set up your stage display in any configuration using that same system. You can get really creative with colors and backgrounds and formatting, or you can keep it simple by just showing the preview windows and showing exactly what's being displayed on each output. Now, before you go, let me show you one more thing that is crucial because I've run across this problem multiple times and that's when the multi-view gets messed up. So let me show you what's, what's going on and how you can prevent it. So sometimes someone will add an action and let's say add action and I wanna change the stage action and I'm gonna change this multi-view to current and next. So when I click on this slide, it changes the multi-view and now I don't have my multi-view display because this action is telling the stage display for the multi-view to change to this layout. So I'm going to go back to the action and uh, edit the action stage and I'm going to change that to no change for now. So if I change it back from multi-view to here, but how can we make sure that the multi-view always stays multi-view? Well, there's a couple of things you can do that can't fully prevent it, but it can at least help. I'm going to click on screens and go to configure screens. And this multi view here, I'm going to rename this do not change. So it's going to rename the multi view. So now if I were to right click on this slide and go to add action stage, and I click see multi view and it says do not change. That is an indication to the operator, I'm not supposed to touch that. Now I can change my back screen all I want, but I'm not gonna change the multi view. And that little tip will help your volunteers or help anybody who's programming to know we're not gonna change the multi view display. Now that you've set up your multi view, you can have complete clarity over every single output and input inside of ProPresenter. No more wondering what's showing up where or switching between different previews or accidentally sending the wrong content to the wrong screen. This was hack number four in our series, five hacks every pro presenter volunteer needs to know. If this solved a problem you've been dealing with, we hit that like button. It really helps other church tech volunteers just like you find solutions like this one. And definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, if you have any questions, drop a comment below and let me know. What other pro presenter problems are driving you crazy or what would you like in a future video? I read every comment and I'll do my best to respond quickly. Hey, if you want to watch the other videos in this series, you can find them right here. Thanks again for watching everybody. Let's get better together for his glory.